morning. Not too bad in here today. Um, as we get started today, uh, Vicki is here from United Healthcare to answer any questions you may have about your health care, about Medicare, health insurance. And she is not here to sell you insurance. She's only here to answer questions you may have. So uh, please stop by and at least say hi to her and wish her a mer Merry Christmas, Vicki. <laughs> um, you notice our pig got here. She's a little thin from the journey. But the marzipan pigs are full bodied and they're in the basket too. Uh, our goal is to purchase 10 pigs to be distributed by the ELCA Global Barnyard, uh, their World Hunger Program. And you may make a, a partial offering or a full offering for a pig. They're $30 each. Um, and just designate your offering pig. I know that seems a little strange in church, but that's okay. Just mark it pig. Uh, everybody will know what that's about. Um, also, this year, instead of providing poinsettias for worship, we're asking that you give money that will go from the church to the community food bank uh, as they lose their government funding to buy the extra food they've needed over the past several months. And it's not clear whether that's going to be restored or not. Um, they need extra funding. And it's a good way for us to reach out with some social justice for our own community uh, to help out here. Remember that every $10 we give to the community food bank buys $90 worth of food. Don't you wish you could shop at that grocery store? Um, but because of the mass buying of food, uh, community food banks around the country, they have that kind of buying power. Um, so please keep that in mind. And you can designate it as poinsettia. We will know what it's for. And that money will be separated out. And before Christmas, it will be forwarded to the community food bank. So please keep that in mind. Uh, also, we have our fair trade fair today after church. Does it go one more week after today? Through the 20th. I think that's two more weeks. Two more weeks. Um, we just ask that you appropriately space when you go to look at things at the fair trade fair. Wait for a turn to go up. Gail and Melody will be back there to help you um, after church. And please remember to, to stop. Um, we did not order nearly the amount this year because we knew we would not have so many people in church. So we were pretty careful about what we did purchase. You can also go on our church website and you can order directly from Fair Trade. And the website link takes it to a place where an American will get credited for that purchase. So um, that you can also do. Uh, but so you have to use the link from the website. You have to use the link from the website for that to happen. So it's easiest to look, just look up www.godsplaceforgrace.org and find the link to Fair Trade on the website. Um, and you can look at their whole catalog then. Uh, and there are beautiful things in their catalog. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Also, remember, there's all kinds of really great chocolate back there. Um, the, the chocolate from Fair Trade is some of the best you'll ever eat. So um, just remember that. Joanna, do you have your eyes on something back there? In the chocolate? Yeah. I, I thought I heard you. <laughs> yeah, I thought I heard you say something about needing to get one of those bars. Uh, today, our. Oh, just a reminder about Christmas Eve, there will be a worship service taped over the next several weeks that will be available for you on Christmas Eve uh, so that you may watch it in your home. Uh, if you do not have access to a smart television or a computer, let us know. We think we already know who needs to have that service mailed to them or delivered to them and we will take care of that before Christmas Eve, so everybody has it for Christmas Eve. And our thanks to the people who are doing special music. 
Uh, Christmas Eve, we have soloists and, and uh, people singing, and I will be playing, and we'll read the Christmas story, and there'll be a brief message, just like we would normally do on Christmas Eve, and there will be a chance for a hymn sing. So please keep that in mind. Um, there'll be an opportunity for you to sing Christmas carols at your home. I think that's probably it for announcements. We do need non-perishable items for the food cart. Gift cards, if you can pick up a gift card. Um, we do have families that are in need that can use those. Um, so please remember that the next time you make a trip to the store. And I know more of us are going less to the store right now because it's not the safest place to be in terms of the COVID-19. Um, I think that's it. Have you heard whether Jim Rasmussen got home? Yes, he did. So Jim Rasmussen got home from the hospital. He was having lots of cardiac issues. Um, everything was okay except he had atrial fibrillation and evidently they were able to get him on medication which helped to take care of that. So keep Jim and Phyllis in your prayers please. Um, and I think that's it. And our thanks today to Jeremiah and Jeff and Debbie and Joanna for leading our worship service today. Um, we're doing primarily Christmas today, but not all Christmas. Uh, so we hope you enjoy that and you're invited to sing along. The tunes we're going to do, you know. So um, it's an opportunity to sing a few Christmas carols early. And I think that is it. Welcome, and I'm going to get rid of my cap because it's not polite to wear it. Now I'm cold. Um, <laughs> it's not polite to wear a cap at worship, so my cap is now down. But I am going to have a jacket on today. Um, Della said I made her cold last week because I was up here in short sleeves. So um, I decided it was cool enough this morning that I would wear a, a light jacket at worship. Um, so Robert, we continue now with the order for confession and forgiveness, which is available on the screen or on page 94 of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we are back back to sin, sin and cannot be ourselves. ourselves. We, we have sinned against you, God, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. And we continue with Him 525.
Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way for your only Son, by the coming strength of us to serve you, with terrified lives, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, 
Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is really interesting to me that we have a sense from the prophet Isaiah that the people who have been in exile have paid the price of their failure to worship God rightly and to care for those people in their midst, both those people who belong to them, widows and orphans, and those who were outsiders who lived in their communities. That was, after all, the message of the prophet and the reason why the people of Jerusalem were driven out and the <coughs> leaders of Jerusalem and the worship uh, leaders in Jerusalem were driven out of their nation. But there is a time when God knows it is time to be restored. And that happened under the reign of King Cyrus of Persia. It happened when the people of Israel, as it did in Egypt, became so numerous that there was some concern on Cyrus' part about how many Jews were living in his nation. And the fact that they had been very profitable in their labors. And so Cyrus, guided by prophets from God, Nehemiah and Ezra, decided to send people back to Israel. And he did so, sometimes not with the greatest wisdom in that journey that people had to take, without support, but the people of Israel were really ready to go back. And so once again, they were established in their land. Now this all takes place about 400 years before the birth of Christ. It's a long time, and guess what happens in the intervening time? Pharisees spring into existence in exile. They are the people of the law. They are the people who maintain the story of God's rule for life. And they come back with the people of Israel. But as the temple is rebuilt, the people of Israel forget again. They forget to care for the widow and the orphan and the resident alien in their midst. The grace of God appears to have been lost on them. First the punishment and then God's grace and forgiveness, and yet they forgot. And so you and I know the result of that. It happened one night in Bethlehem. It happened in a less than likely place for the world's greatest king to be born. It happened in the shelter for animals. We don't know for sure whether it was a cave or a barn, uh, but that's where Christ, the Messiah, the king of all of creation, was born to Mary and Joseph. And the rest of that story we get to hear on Christmas Eve about the glory and power of the offense of that night. Even the firmament and the heavens sprang into proclaiming his birth. So what about you and me? As we live today in the world, how is it that we live with God's grace in our lives? And whether you're here at church or at home on video watching this later, or if you like me, I go home to listen to my sermon because I don't do that all of the time. And it's a good thing for me to be able to do. But I also like to listen to this music because I'm busy playing the piano and I don't really get to hear all the fullness of the Gospel Sunday music until I listen to it. 
and thank you to the technology of my children, we can put it on our 55-inch flat screen in the living room. I still don't know how they do it. But life for us today is not so easy. In the church, we have asked this year for gift cards, for pigs, for contributions to the community food bank, and for assistance through the Fair Trade Fair to bring economic justice to other places in the world. At the very same time that there seems to be so much uncertainty around us. Imagine the life that Jesus walked into. There was all kind of, uh, kinds of uncertainty around him. He lived with God's grace in the face of all of that uncertainty. Interlopers, the Romans, throughout the nation of his people, and the misleading teaching of the leaders of the synagogue and the temple in Jerusalem. All of that Jesus had to face, and he faced it by the grace of God. You and I have the same things going on. They might not seem like they're quite the same depth. You know, maybe making a decision about going to the grocery store doesn't have the biggest impact on our life, but you should live at my house. How dare we be out of cereal or eggs? And we could stock the refrigerator with 120 eggs and they'd be gone in two or three weeks. And we'd still have to go back to the grocery store. Or the forever must be full bag of cinnamon toast crunch. That is a staple food in this time of staying at home. So when those decisions get made, Jeremiah plays a role in that, and Rachel plays a role in that, and their role right now is to say to us, you may not go to the grocery store because they're very concerned about older parents and the risk that gets taken by going. And so we sneak out. We sneak out with God's grace, confident that God will care for us as we journey. Melody found the first red kettle this, this last week. There's one at Fry's by the house now. Because we've always, kind of, we've always really intentionally contributed uh, to the Salvation Army because we know the kind of work they do. But it's been hard to find them this year. And because we're having to sneak out to go to the grocery store, living with God's grace, it's not always at the time that somebody may be out there ringing their bell at that kettle. And the kettle may be gone at the hour we get there. You didn't hear any of this, Jeremiah, and don't tell your sister. <laughs> but we, we really are attempting to live with God's grace in our lives and with our family. We get pretty tired most evenings about the time of dinner time, and yet Jared is very interested in having the Advent candle lighted and reading the scripture passage from the calendar here at church. And then, of course, Grandma Sharon got him a Lego calendar for Advent. And that's really his incentive. I'd like to think it was the scripture reading. I'd like to think it was singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. But I know it's the Lego calendar. There's a character in every day but it achieves something because it provides for our family the presence of God's grace because we have an insistent child who helps us remember no matter how tired we are that we need to be lighting the Advent candles in preparation for celebrating the birth of Christ again. And that's crucial for us because we live in a time with a great absence of God's grace. We, we are living in the midst of an upswing in this virus that is massive. Our hospital staffs are overwhelmed, and it's going to get worse. 
and all of us are kind of holding our breath and hoping for a vaccine and appropriate vaccine that will work for us to help protect us, even though we're going to continue to have to wear masks because not everybody will take the vaccine and not everybody will get it at the same time. And so we have to be cautious. But living with God's grace means that every day in all of this difficulty, we are surrounded by the power of God's love through Jesus Christ. And though we are waiting in this Advent season to celebrate Christ's birthday again, Christ is not absent from us. Christ's spirit is present in, with, and around us every day. If we are willing to have a sense for the presence of the spirit. There's much to do still, isn't there? Yesterday, our neighbor did as he always does and put us to shame. He put his inflatables up yesterday and had part of his Christmas decorations up even last week. Ours are not even out of the garage yet or up from the basement. I'm going through a lot of medical testing and Melody's had a medical test that needed to be done and we've got all of the education issues taking place every day at the house. The lack of social activity for our boys is really kind of a crisis for them, and it is for many children. They're used to being with their friends and being with their teachers face to face, person to person. And those things are just not available now. But what continues to be available is that we are living in this time with the presence of God's grace surrounding us. That has not changed. It did not change for the Hebrews or Jews in exile because without the presence of God, they would not have become profitable. Their population would not have expanded. They would have been destroyed perhaps in exile. But instead, they flourished by the hand of God. And God gave them the necessary kind of guidance. Those who really were couched in the rules of worship and living every day, the Pharisees. And it's what the people needed as they returned to Israel. And they began to rebuild the temple. It's what the people of God needed at the time. And you and I need to know that the very same thing is true for us. I have to tell you, I think one of the big, biggest exhibitions of God's grace is the prayer chain. That prayer chain is so busy, you would not believe it. It is every day, multiple times. And we're praying for people in California and people back on the East Coast and for uh, Sharon and Don's grandson, Dylan, who's headed to... Okinawa, is that right, with his wife and family in the military? We're praying for people all over the world, in addition to the local prayer requests we have. And that's a part of God's grace, to know that people are praying for us constantly. That's God's coverage of our daily living. And when things get hectic and kind of wild, we need to remember that God is present with us. And I can tell you there have been plenty of times in recent weeks when I forgot that. Especially in the face of some of the tests I'm going through. I forget that God is with me during those, no matter how panicky I might get. And God is there with his grace helping me weather through them. We need to remember this Advent, the one to whom we belong the one who loves us so dearly that he came in Bethlehem as a baby, growing up in a family home, being taught uh, the, with the faithfulness of his mother and father about the religion of his people, and then coming to know the fullness of God's grace and presence in him as he stepped into the role of being the living word of God on earth. 
It is the living word of God who surrounds us. We must never forget that. Of all times, in the midst of a pandemic with economic struggles and, and food shortages for so many people and work shortages, we must remember that the God who gave us Jesus Christ continues to pour his grace around our lives every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our next hymn is Angels from the Realms of Glory. It's hymn number 275, if you're using the hymnal versus the screen. Um, it's a different arrangement, <clears throat> so you might realize that you're singing a note here or there that's a little quicker than what the arrangement provides for. Jesus, for the church and for all of God's creation. God of grace, you pour your love uh, into and around our lives every single day. In times of distress and difficulty, you call us to turn to you and promise to hear our needs. Guide us back to you every time we forget. Let your Holy Spirit work in our lives to call us to return and help us to find great joy 
in the grace which is meant to support and sustain us and your gift of faith in our lives every day. Hear us, O God. Gracious Lord, we pray for the Beecham family, for David, for Julie, for Mark and Leanna. We pray for Dave's business, that you will help it to grow. We pray for Julie, that you will strengthen her body. We offer that same prayer for David. We pray for Lisa Weekly, that you might bring your healing to her. Uh, for Fernando, who also needs your care. And we remember today Ron, Pastor Ron and Becky, as they have spent far more time in Tucson than they ever thought they would. They planned on being here six months a year, and Lord, it's been almost a full year already. Keep them in your care as they await their return to their other home in Minnesota. And keep them safe as they move uh, around in the community. Help them to utilize the good care of their daughter who lives, lives next door to them. And gracious Lord, we pray that you'll be with us too, for we are all faced with difficult decisions about self-care in this time of virus, about masking and gloving and washing hands and keeping social distancing present every place we go. We pray that you will keep us all safe, that you'll guide us each day. We pray for Candace and Lisa and Alexis in Hawaii. It's not quite clear whether they're going to get the house they've been looking at, but Lord, that house is going to require a lot of work. Be with them as they make choices and decisions for how to move forward with that in their lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Gracious Lord, we pray for Jim's sister, Janet, who has skin cancer on her nose. Uh, they're going to take care of it uh, at the end of January. We pray that you'll be with her, that you'll be with his cousin, Janet, Janet Welsh, helping her to exercise and uh, strengthen her back. That you'll be with Jim, especially in his eye, as it continues to heal and move forward. We pray for healing from the disease that his eyesight suffers with, as well as his recovery from the cataract surgery, that it might truly improve his vision. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is greater. We also pray, Lord, for Jim Welsh, Jim's cousin, um, that they can. Oh, oh, that they can fix his triglycerides, Lord. And we pray for Jim also, again, for his kidney stones that he's been dealing with for months and months and months, Lord. We continue to hold him up before you for healing from those kidney stones. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Irving West. He, he was a boats, boatswain, boatswain's mate in the Navy, survivor of the USS Oklahoma. And now his remains have been returned to Oahu, Hawaii, to be with his shipmates. We thank you for his service, and we pray that his memory and service will carry forward for many years with his friends and family. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for our children, Lord. They really are not doing as well as all of us might have hoped with this uh, distance learning at school, but it's a necessity. We pray that you'll sustain and keep them in your graceful care as they deal with a way of going to school that they're not very happy with. We pray that you'll build up their sense of self, that you'll bring your healing when they seem to be coming apart that you'll support and nurture them, that they might know the power of your love in their lives every day. We thank you for the doctors, for the therapists, for the psychiatrists who work with our children in this difficult time. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, we thank you today for our 
vocalists and musicians. Uh, we pray for, with thanksgiving for the way your grace fills our lives when we sing and play and, and give praise to your holy name. Help us every day to be in the very same place. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior and your only begotten Son, the babe of Bethlehem. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Go tell it on the mountain with refrains. I knew that council was going to go soon.